Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2. In the last episode, we concluded our work on Project Firewalker and got a somewhat inconclusive conclusion involving a Prothean relic. This time, we've come to recruit the Warlord, or the Krogan. The game seems to change what it calls that dossier, but anyway, here we are at Planet Corlus. A garbage scow... Sco? Scow? I don't know what that word is. A garbage scow of the climate was how one Citadel Council member described Corlus at the turn of the century, and ever since then the Corlus Tourist Bureau has been attempting to rebrand their planet. It hasn't worked, though they have tried calling it the recycling centre of the galaxy, corruption scandal scandals and a staggering murder rate ensure that Corlus's image is permanently stained. Corlus' biggest business is the recycling of decommissioned or junked spacecraft into their component parts. While the invention of Omnigel has made this process significantly cleaner, it is still a dirty business that chokes Corliss's sky with smog and fills its ports with megatons of scrap. A shady hospitality industry and a scavenger underclass round out the spectacle of urban decay. Travel Advisory Corliss ranks second in murder per capita in the Terminus systems and first in off-world at murder. Civilian traffic is encouraged to employ security professionals when visiting. Sounds very friendly, doesn't it? Let's land. So with us here, I'm going to be taking Garrus and Jack. I haven't taken Garrus for a proper spin yet, or even Jack particularly. Um, she only got a bit of a trial on Garrus's mission. And they're both great on this mission, and they work really well together for a reason I will discuss. Uh, me and Garrus are okay for points, but Jack's got three. So I could put them into pull three, but actually I put them into subject zero, because that health boost is really handy, because she is squishy as fuck. Compare, yeah. Well, actually, yeah, it actually doesn't look like she's got that much different health to us, but she just, she seems to die a lot more. I don't know why. Um, generally, weapons-wise, I think we're all pretty good. Let's head in. Dossier doesn't say if Okir is on this planet by choice. Assume hostiles. Loudspeakers. Someone likes the sound of their voice. Stay focused. We're looking for a Krogan warlord. Oh, that's so cool about seeing a giant. It looks like a Quarian ship going past. Because there's just loads of ships in orbit around this planet because they're just left there waiting to be scrapped. It's a really cool concept, just this <laughs> planet sized scrap heap. As you can see, there's someone broadcasting on the loudspeaker a lot of. Angry, shouty propaganda. I'm sure that'll that'll become important as we go forward. I'm going to set up my weapons in a slightly different configuration to usual. I'm going to have my sniper as ever on disruptor ammo, but I'm going to have my pistol on cryo ammo, which it already is, brilliant. And I'm going to have my machine pistol, which I never use. I'll put that on cryo ammo anyway. I want to give cryo ammo a fair shot, because um, I've, I've researched it a little, little bit. And I want to see if it's oh, useful. So, the plan is, I'm basically going to use... The pistol is a kind of almost shotgun of just a kind of heavy blasting cryo weapon. Because I don't want to rely on my sniper quite as much, especially because there is a lot of quite close quarters here. And obviously my sniper rifle is ass when it comes to that. Anyway, with those mercenaries taken care of, there's a wounded one here. Let's talk to him. Shit. Shit. I won't stop bleeding. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Son of a bitch. Doesn't look that bad, actually. He doesn't need to know that. I knew it wasn't Berserkers. Ah, not at range. You're Mercs. Or Alliance. I'm not... I'm not telling you anything. I've got a nice application of Metagel ready to go. But if you'd rather I just keep walking... Son of a bitch. I just... I don't know anything. I just shoot the overflow from the labs. The old Krogan up there, he, he's really been cleaning house lately. Jador hired him to make her an army, but the Krogan he creates are insane. So we use them for live ammo training. It's all crap. I don't get paid enough to goddamn bleed out. Outpost 4, Jador wants us to move. We need coordinates on that Krogan pack. What's he talking about? Jador runs a Blue Sun's outlier, and she's making Krogan for an army. But they all come out crazy, tough as hell, but just insane. Wow. Is that worth the crazy money it would cost? I don't know. I, I just point and shoot and bank my credits. Maybe there's something better in the labs. Once your friend's gone, understand? Uh, patrol? The last group dispersed. Lost sight five minutes ago. Dispersed? Chidora will be pissed. She wanted a show. You asked for a report, you got it. Dispersed. Understood. Returning to the labs. There. You see? I'm helping. Have you seen Okir? Does he know about all this? We can't go in the labs, but everyone sees what happens when the Krogan come out. I've shot hundreds. 
They're crazy, mindless. Anyone up there, they know what's going on. Is Jador's lab heavily guarded? There are big guns to keep ships away. We're not outfitted to fight goddamn commandos. If you start limping now, you might find a shady spot before you bleed out. Shit. Oh, shit. Oh. Funny. I thought so. Come on. Our warlord is somewhere in Jador's lab. So, Jador is speaking over the lab speaker, and here indeed is. Oh, I think people have been shot up ahead, but here is one of the kind of lab grown Krogan. And they appear to be. So, based on the sounds of it, uh, Dr. Okia, who we're here to get for our team, is producing these lab grown. Whoopsie daisy. Producing these lab grown Krogan for a Blue Suns leader called Jador, but they aren't working properly. They're coming out mental. So, that could be interesting when we get here. Um, this mission is mostly combat-based kind of stuff, hence why Garrus is a brilliant choice, and... Oh, shit, bags. Well, I will show you why Garrus and Jack work so well together. Observe, if we use pull with Jack on this... Oh, well, of course he cocked it up. Garrus, what weapon you want? Oh, you're on your assault rifle, that's why. Usually they're a fantastic combination, because if you throw them up into the air with Jack, you can then have Garrus just ping them out of the air himself. Have we used Garrus on a mission yet? Yes, we have. Um, sorry, beginning of a new recording session. It's been a while since the last one, so I couldn't remember if it shown up concussive shot and stuff like that. Ooh, these guys up here are rhyme... rhyme? I was gonna say ripe for an arc projecting, but I've actually not got that many arcs left anyway. Well, it looks like it's sniper time. For a change, it's always sniper time. Ah, there's a heavy over there. Oh no, he's not a heavy. Where's the heavy? The all the heavy. Wonderful. That sounds like Garrus is using concussive blasts. So let's have Jack lift this guy up. And look at that. The moment he's in the air, Garrus takes him out with the sniper. He's very good at that. Um, and that makes anyone who's got pull a great combination with anyone who has a sniper. For now, our only options for pull are Jack and um, Jacob. But Jack's more fun because she's got more biotic options. Jacob's a bit tougher, but Jack's not exactly bad at all. Right. Uh, my sniper's running low, so I'm going to switch to the pistol a bit, especially because we're going into kind of a closer region while I regenerate health for my... health ammunition for my sniper. So, there's a Krogan here, and he's fighting up at them. So we'll join in him, I think. Join in with him. See, this pistol is over long distances. This is actually really accurate. Oh, I broke that guy. And if I freeze that guy, then other people can just take, him, take care of him. Same with this dude. I think, yeah, I should use the pistol a little bit more, because I tend to just use... Um, Oh, shit. Well, I used AI hacking on that guy. That didn't do anything. Because I, I tend to use the sniper quite a lot and then run out of ammuni ammunition on it. Anyway, with that done, we can talk to tank-grown Krogan. You are different. New. You don't smell like this world. Seven night cycles, and I have felt only the need to kill. But you... Something makes me speak. Night cycles? Seven days? They must breed them full size, ready to kill. Not much improvement over regular mercs if they need training. Bread... to kill. No, I kill because my blood and bone tell me to. But it's not why I was flushed from Glass Mother. Survival is what I hear in my head. Against the enemy that threatens all my kind. But I failed, even before waking. That is what the voice in the water said. That is why I wait here. How can you speak if you're only a week old? There was a scratching sound in my head, and it became the voice. It taught things I would need. Walking, talking, hitting, shooting. Then the voice said I was not perfect, and the teaching stopped. And now I am here. It was taught enough to be judged. I still don't know what the goal was, though. I don't know, but I am not perfect. Okir's voice? Did he speak to you while you were in your tank? I heard the voice. Not like now, with ears. Inside. I called it Father. It liked that. But it was disappointed. I'm not what it needs me to be. A lab with Krogans. Sounds like an attempt to cure the genophage. Cure? Cure was never whispered. Survive 
Resist. Ignore. How did you disappoint the voice? I don't know. It was decided before I left Tank Mother. I was not perfect. That Merc said these guys go crazy. I don't know of that, but I'm not perfect. I destroyed Saren's cure. How does Okir expect these Krogan to ignore the genophage if not by curing it? No idea. Doesn't look like he's had much success so far. Can you show me the laboratory? I need to speak with Okir. The... Glass Mother. She is up, past the broken parts, behind many of you fleshy things. I will show you. He's friendly. You fleshy things are slow when big things are in your way. Can you show us the way? Help us fight to the lab. No. You're giving up? I will fight if they come, but I feel it deep that I must wait. I kill, but only here. I am not perfect, but I have purpose. I must wait until called. Released. Wow, there's a bit of money on that corpse there. Um, that gives you quite a lot to think about there. Oh, they're all free. That can't be a particularly great thing. Um, can you knock that guy over, Garrus? Thank you. That's the amount of concussive shot if it knocks enemies onto their ground. Onto the ground. It gives you kind of a bit of time to think. Um, that's what a lot of combat seems to be in this game, is just at least incapacitating every enemy with, with something. Oh, here we go. So, here's more of the Krogan Berserkers, and unlike that last one, these are not friendly. So they have armor and then health, like any standard Krogan, so my incinerate power will be particularly useful here. Garrus and Jack are not great once their armor's up, but once it's down, they can do whatever. Oh, that was interesting. And we'll fight a fair few of them here, but yeah. Oh, the subtitles made it look like she was talking, but she wasn't. Um, I should burn through his armor quickly. Then once the armor's down, at least then I can do shit to him. Ooh, that helps. <laughs> oh, is he, did he? Oh, I thought he went off the edge. That would have been hilarious. But yeah, it, it's it's interesting the idea of the kind of it gives you something to think about with the lab-grown Krogan that they have been judged as not perfect. Akira wants them to be perfect for something. Killing apparently isn't what he wants perfection in, so... Yeah, let's have a little think about that on the way over there. Wow, Iron Cinerate gets through almost all of its armor in one. That's fantastic. Knock him over, please, Garrus. Thank you. Wonderful. Basically, once a Krogan is de-armored, it's less of a threat because you can keep it... Because you can kind of keep them pinned in that way. And, again, the combat in this game is very much about just keeping enemies incapacitated rather than actually taking them out one at a time. So just identify your threats... And do what you can about them. Let's bypass this door. Six. And we've got a few things here. We have got a... Where has it gone? Special sniper rifle. Um, so that's sniper rifle damage for us. And there's also some power cells, which is wonderful. And what time are we on? Only 15 minutes. Um, I was going to hold the episode here, but that seems a little short, so let's proceed on a little bit. <laughs> I was going to go up and just like punch that guy in the back, but it looks like they kind of took him out for me. Um, I'm actually, you know, I'm quite enjoying using this cryo pistol. I can't imagine cryo is particularly any use for me on the sniper rifle, but here it, do, it is giving the rounds a little more oomph, because, wow, more importantly, I think the... Oh, dear. I think the... Use your words, Doctor. Synthetic, anti-synthetic overload. Oh, what's it called? Oh, bloody hell, I'm going to have to check. Disruptor ammo does actually take away from the power a little bit of them. Um, makes it more damaging to shields, but most of these enemies aren't shielded, so this pistol's actually a bit better for punching my way through, um, and it means I can save ammo a little bit. Oh, uh, we've got some heavies back there who have got shields, so let's switch to the sniper rifle, go invisible, and see what I can do about that. Come on. Pop your head up. There we go. Wonderful. I, I don't think I'm actually really going to bother upgrading. Um, 
what's it called, upgrading Assassin's Cloak much more because I really don't use it that often. I have to really remember to use it rather than just using it normally. And send a fireball over that way to take her out. I think it was actually a male, I think it was a Batarian. I don't know why I said her. <laughs> I assume that means who gave them arms as in like who gave them weapons, but I absolutely interpreted in my head as like who gave them arms as in like limbs. <laughs> so I'm just picturing a couple of Krogans like slugging their way around so <laughs> with no arms, just kind of on the belly, doing the worm. Uh ridiculous. Now, if we go through here, then we're not where I thought I was. Interesting. I think I'll keep Garrett on snipers for now, because he makes a nice combination with Jack for that purpose. Ooh, stuff. Medkit. Oh, and shooty. Shooty doos over here. Um, hold on. Just switch the pistol. I'm probably going to be back on it. I never use the machine pistol, though. In Venice, that's because that particular machine pistol, the shuriken, the one you start with, is crap. There's one we'll be getting before too long. Oh, did I get two in one shot? No, I didn't. So that'd be great. Um, yeah, there's a machine pistol we get before too long, which is much better. Um, oh, there we go. But until then, it's 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 kind of crap weapon because it's well, you'll notice on it if I bring it up, you'll see its range even when zoomed in is kind of awful, and it's just it's slower than the actual pistol. Um, though allegedly a machine pistol, if I just actually press the button to fire the pistol and like not hold it and kind of go. It's almost as fast and lays down damage. As fast and more accurately, so... Yeah, not a, not a huge... Not a great weapon, exactly. Uh, let's overload that guy with Garrus, because he's got shields. Ooh, overload specialist, wonderful. Burn this guy. And I... How am I doing for heavy weapon ammo? I need to check. See, that's nice about the cryo stuff. I can just kind of freeze them in place there, which is handy. Oh, I got the incineration on them slightly too slow. I thought would have been fantastic. Boink! Oh, okay, well, that really didn't work. I was gonna, I was hoping I'd, like, shatter him. All this cryo stuff is really dark when you think about it. You're actually, like, freezing someone solid. That's really difficult to do, if nothing else. Money on that guy, which is nice. And, oh, this bit can be a bit interesting, so I'm gonna bring up my arc projector, because there are a fair few of you around the corner here. Let's start by taking out these guys. Oh, I thought there were more of them. Oh, now they're bringing up the more ones. Great, that was a bit of a waste of an arc, if I'm honest. I think this is the nice thing about my new pistol system now as well, as it means- Oh, balls. It means that- Oh, I hacked him as well, for God's sake. It's because I got one set to one trigger and the other to the other, well, like, the bumper buttons. I keep accidentally pressing the wrong one. But yeah, it means I can kind of build up sniper ammo whilst fighting with the pistol. Because the pistol doesn't seem to ever really run out of ammo. Um, take out those heavies at the back. That's always something I find vaguely ridiculous. Literally every time you fire up- Infiltrator's cloak the moment you fire out, someone goes, Target lost, or I can't see him, or something like that, and it just feels a little bit silly. Are we good? Is there still a heavy back there? There is. I think I'm invisible, yep, yeah, that's uh, great. My hotkeys do work while I'm in the scope. I think we're good here. We better be good, because I'm out of sniper rifle ammo. Um... <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um... Earlier when I was saying, like, oh, I was going to end up this area, but we're a bit too, um, it's a bit too early. This is where I meant to end it. It's this, this lab area, not the other one. And here, we're almost perfectly on 20 minutes, so I'm better at judging this than I thought. I'm just got to actually read my notes. Um, so, thank you very much for watching. Ooh, it's looking grim out there. We've come to the very ugly planet of Corlys. In search of Okia, he's growing Krogan. It's not great. It's a bit of a war zone. Hope you join me next time when we're going to go in search of Okia properly. Thank you very much and good day.